Hi everyone, Jonathan J. Ryanette here. Um, sorry about that. We <laughs> tried going live through a new method that we have, and unfortunately, it went live to my personal page as opposed to the Wargaming Recon page. And um, <laughs> I'm sorry, things are just crazy here. I'm a little, it's all messed up. So this is our pandemic coffee break. We're going to be coming at you generally Monday through Friday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, Thursdays, we think we'll be adding it in, but doing it probably at like 11.30 maybe uh, and see how that goes. But the time on Thursdays will be slightly different. And really the whole purpose of all of this is that with the pandemic here, all of us across the globe really are kind of in a state of where we're either being furloughed without pay, right? We're working from home and we're in isolation, or maybe we're kind of um, quarantining ourselves, or at least we're doing social distancing. And so we might not actually be where uh, we normally would be in actually engaging with one another. And so perhaps we're feeling isolated. And my hope is that we can combat some of the isolation through things like this. So for today, really, I'm just hoping, first of all, that any of you who are watching will put a comment in uh, and tell us what you've been doing, how things are in your life. Feel free to share. We're going to support one another as much as we can and use this as a forum for that. And um, I'd just like to know how you're getting along with everything. But I'd actually like to start by sharing with all of you something cool that I've been working on. And I got extra excited a few moments ago. When I thought about it. So hold on one sec while I go out of frame to get what I need. There we go. <laughs> so I've been working on this, which doesn't look like a whole lot at the moment, does it? But it is the tent barracks for the feudal Japanese mountain fort, Yamashiro mountain fort, put out by things from the basement. Uh, roof comes off as does on all their kits. You can see inside. So this is something I've started doing in some spare time. Uh, as I work from home, I can glue a little and do some work and everything. And this is a neat kit. It doesn't look like a whole lot, does it? Because you just kind of have some framing going on and you have that. But one of the cool things is you do the framing for all the sides, but then this right here, all the wood is a separate piece. So it gets glued in afterwards. You have a base. And of course you have the standard feudal Japanese roof. You can actually see some of it's coming up <laughs> uh, with the standard dynamic for all of that. So it's really cool how this goes together. And one of the things I would highly recommend is pre-painting it as much as you can first. So while it was still in its sprue, as it were, right, as it were, uh, um, I sprayed it brown and then I did some touch-ups by hand. And then I haven't done the roof section yet. But I did on this some dry brushing. I like to use Citadel's um, 7th um, Bark for a dry brush on any brown stuff because I feel it gives just enough highlight. I'll take some pictures uh, with my better camera afterwards so you can see that and we'll put it on social media. But I have a big question for all of you before I talk a little bit more about this. As a tent, a lot of this inside is going to be covered in this is supposed to be the ground, so it's going to be muddy, it's going to be dirty, it'll be grass or whatever. Should I actually do any basing inside? Because uh, right now this is just brown that I've um, sprayed, and I don't think I inked or anything. Should I actually paint any brown? I have sterling mud and battle mire that I like to use. Should I use that, or should I use any of my Vallejo black mud on there? I have a lot of tufts from Gamers Grass, from Lead Bears Tufts. Love Lead Bears Tufts, by the way. Gamers Grass you can get from... Just about anywhere, really, but I love to get it from things from the basement. Um, should I use any of that in here? Uh, please comment below, or if you're watching this on YouTube, comment below. We'll also have these all put up on YouTube as well, I should mention. So, yes, these are live here on Facebook, but then we will be putting them up on YouTube and linking to them through Twitter. So I'd love to know if you think I should do any of the insides. And the reason why I ask is, let me get this out. So when you get the kit, it comes with this, which is some crinkle paper. That's been laser cut, so you can see the holes, right? Um, and then it goes actually on the piece here. Um, so Mark uh, Huskins writes in, hey, Mark, how are you? 
And nice to talk to you. I hope things are going well. I know it's been a little tricky for your neck of the woods because with your line of the work, they furloughed you, and I'm, I'm really sorry to hear about that. Um, but Mark mentions, if you won't see it, then just a base coat is sufficient. And that was my thought as well, actually, just to back up to the inside, uh, was just that the base coat was sufficient, especially because when you put the tent on, and I'm not going to glue it on live for you, but I will carefully, uh, and normally I would suggest using a hobby knife for this, but carefully just break it apart just because I want to show you basically how much it blocks because I don't think you're going to see very much inside uh, of the piece or the ground at all. Uh, but sometimes I get a little weird. Uh, so you have the core kit here. And then the tent piece, this represents tent flaps and everything. Let me just get it situated on here. And then you guys can see better. And ladies, because I know there are ladies who watch as well. So you see, it'll be generally like this. So a lot of it will be obscured. You really won't get to see a whole lot inside. And figure it's going to be on the table. It'll be blocked. So there'll be all that as well. Uh, I'm just looking down at the stream here to see what you all are seeing. But you'll have that. You'll have the roof. And you'll be at a table's length. And then it'll be the same on the corners too. Although I suppose you could leave the corners off. You don't have to put them on. It's whatever makes you happy. So it'll be something like this without the extra and so forth. So you won't see a whole lot on it. Uh, Mark, I think you might be right that maybe the thing to do is to leave it as is painted inside. But I would love to know what other people think. So even if you're watching this later, please comment and let me know if you think I should be painting the ground of it. Go full basing. I have all this cool basing stuff. I can use in pebbles and rocks. I mean, let's face it, everyone. <laughs> Those of us who are furloughed or who, like myself, working from home, uh, you're going to have some free time, <laughs> I hate to say. So you could do things like this. But one of the things I'm most excited about, and I, this is just really ingenious. Your Yorg is brilliant. I tell him that all the time, and I think he's tired of hearing it from me. So if any of you want to tell Yorg, how brilliant he is, please do so because then it won't come for me and he can't be like, ah, you told me already. Um, but I think he needs to hear it. A little mud won't hurt, says Mark. Hey, should I go outside and get some mud? Because it's raining here in Massachusetts. I could just dig up some of my own mud <laughs> and put it on and see how it goes. Be very realistic, wouldn't it? Um, one of the neat things though, when you assemble this kit and trying to grab my phone because I want to pull up the instructions for all of you since I haven't done a Facebook live stream in a while so I can't recall how to share it with you but so I'm going to put this up on the screen from my phone yay Mark says Jorg you are brilliant uh, so let's get nice and close so come on camera you can see here which is blurry on this uh, screen and I apologize we'll put a better picture up um, to hold the tent flaps in place, yeah, that's better. Uh, you actually need clothespins. And in this day and age, I don't know about you, but we don't have clothespins. So I bravely went out, and I say bravely, half mockingly, but honestly, I'm an asthmatic. So this virus is very scary for me because, like, a cold leaves me out for a week. Breathing is hard on a good day for me. <laughs> so Breathing with the thing going around just isn't good. But bravely, I went to the dollar store and I picked up a pack of clothespins. <laughs> so if you don't have clothespins and it's safe for you to do so, you can go to your local store. Uh, I'm sure they could use the business, local corner store or wherever. Pick up some clothespins. These will come in handy not just for this kit, but for all sorts of MDF kits. Uh, one thing I've learned from other brands such as, and I'm looking off camera, but other brands like, I don't know, Foreground, if they say use a clothespin, Use a clothespin. Just do it. Uh, so the clothespins will help keep the tent stuff in place, as it were, while it's, it's drying. Because, I mean, like, if you think of it, right, while this is on, what are you going to do? You're going to put some weight on? You'll probably break the crinkle paper, and you don't want to do that. So clothespin will help keep it in place. Jorg, again, is brilliant for how he's designed these things. And I'm just I'm, I'm thankful that he's doing it. But a cool thing, to come back to it, 
I'm a little scattered today. I apologize for that. Um, a cool thing about this is it's my last Yamashiro Mountain Fort kit. Yay, me! <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really excited. Uh, one, that it'll, it's almost done, believe it or not. It doesn't look like it, but I'll glue the tent stuff in. It's basically dry brushed. I've already inked it, done all that stuff. So just listen, and then I'll have to seal it. And then I'll be done with Yamo Shiro Mountain Fort. And that means it'll be time for me to do another MDF kit. And you get to pick, okay? So we have some options for you to pick. Continuing with the feudal Japanese stuff, I have the arched bridge, and this looks really, really cool. This also would go really nice with the new, and this is not sponsored by Things to the Basement, but I do love them. Um, would go also really nice with the new stuff that York has out. And uh, can I screen share? No, I can't screen share. But what I can do is I can pull up their stuff and i can tell you what the new things is so he has a limited number of pre-painted buddha stash shoes which look gorgeous and i think you should check out and then he's also added a couple other things to the feudal japanese collection as well so he has a prayer wheel which retails for six dollars and fifty cents american in a chozuya which is a purification station for $12.50. And these all would go really nicely with his feudal Japanese temple set. And the reason why I mentioned the temple set is because technically this bridge is from the temple set. Of course, you could use it with anything. And I have, I think, everything or almost everything else from his set. I got the four lanterns. I get this arch bridge, the bell, which I love. And I, I've given... um bells and lanterns i believe to mike Payne to use in his hang high and you know what i lie i don't have the tory gate or the temple but so anyway the question is should i do an arch bridge as my next one should i switch gears and go slightly more modern with an outhouse for the russian village for world war ii it's a nice little kit should I do livestock? We've got livestock buildings here. Or should I go even more modern and do a chimney from his industrial range? So I'd love to know what you think. We'll have a poll up on the Facebook page as well. But please tell me, chimney, livestock, outhouse, or bridge? What should I do next? Uh, should be really cool. And while we're talking about some cool stuff, I want to mention some things that you can do from home while you are sequestered. So maybe you're into role-playing games. Maybe you're into, I don't know, spies, like Top Secret New World Order, put out by TSR Games. We are a proud member of the TSR Games Podcast Network. Oh, I love this book. Just as beautifully done. Um, maybe you want to play, but... Maybe you're short on money because a lot of us are right right now. Um, I'm lucky I'm still being paid uh, to work from home, but not everyone is. Well, TSR Games is giving away free PDFs of all of their stuff. So let me just get you some information on that because it's. I just think it's really awesome that they're doing this. And I want to make sure I get the correct information for you so I don't say the wrong thing on how to get it uh but they do have all sorts of cool products out on tsr games and i should also say that anyone who's backed our kickstarter will be getting coupon codes for tsr uh for things in the basement and cigar box battle so depending on what level you backed we're giving you a special thank you which will be discounts that you can use at these places and to buy whatever it is you want and the discounts vary. So we're just waiting on some last coupon codes to come into us from these very kind uh, sponsors here. And once we get them, I'll be emailing those out. So here we go. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So if you go to topsecretnwo.com, uh, you will be able to go ahead and download free PDFs uh, for the month of March. So you will get, let's see. Oh, this is all sorts of stuff for Top Secret. My first time looking at it. So you can get um, 
agent dossiers. So those are character sheets for you. You can get vehicle cards that help you to keep track of stats for and speed for all the different cars that are in there, motorcycles, trucks, um, all that sort of stuff. You get dice mats that you can print out as well. The administrator or GM screen. And then, of course, the the rules and all sorts of stuff. So they have all sorts of free PDF downloads um, that you can get. And if you want to buy a physical thing, they are still shipping them during this lockdown time. So you can get all that and do whatever you like. And that's available as well. So you can be sure to do all those wonderful things and get all that kind of stuff now. And um, they're shipping it all. And speaking of shipping, I want to highlight a local game store that I think is one of the best around. So I'm talking about the Hobby Bunker. Hobby Bunker is based in Malden, Massachusetts. They're fantastic. They're my favorite local historical gaming shop. Anything historical you want, they have or they can get. So, of course, now that people are social distancing, you're probably not going out shopping as much, although Hobby Bunker is open and you can shop there if you feel that it's safe to do so for yourself. Um, but if not, they're doing um, $9.99 shipping, which is standard shipping, or $25 for international shipping. They ship worldwide, anything you want. This shipping does not... Um, it's just what they have. But unfortunately, they are getting creamed on oversized stuff. So... Uh, that makes life a little tricky for them, which just means it costs a little bit more if you're getting a lot of big bulky things. But otherwise, if you're in the U.S. and you spend $100 or more, you get free shipping. You have to use a special code on their website, and it is free 100 Or for this month alone, if you are in New England, so any of you who are uh, tuning into this and you're in New England here, and I know there's a lot of you who are, you can get free shipping if you call them. You got to call them on the phone, people. You get free shipping if your order is over fifty dollars, uh, as long as it doesn't include any oversized things. So you need paints, you need games, you need models, any of that kind of stuff. You can get that. And the owner Matt, he's really going above and beyond. He's willing if you are on the North Shore of Boston, if you're in like Malden, if you're in Melrose, Stoneham, or Wakefield, and you order at least twenty five dollars worth of stuff, he will. Deliver it to you for free. He'll drop it off your front doorstep or wherever you want. No contact. You don't have to worry about that at all. He'll drop it off. You just prepay with PayPal or a credit card either by sending him an email or do a phone call again. And you can check out stuff that they have online. Uh, they have a great website. So a lot of really cool stuff there. But always just give them a call too. So you can either go to hobbybunker.com or you can call them at 781-321-8855. Uh, they're in Malden, Massachusetts. So if you feel that you're safe, you can head on over if you want to make the trip and pick up something. There's no gaming on site. Again, we're practicing social distancing. Let's be smart. Let's be responsible people. Uh, yeah, maybe you aren't sick. Maybe I'm not sick. Maybe no one we know is, but also we might not have symptoms. And then there are people like me who are immune compromised. <laughs> Yeah, me with my asthma. Some people have diabetes. Some people are of a certain age. So it's really important for those of us like myself. I would really appreciate if you take the extra step to be a little extra smarter and more mindful uh, so that you can protect those of us who could really be hurt very badly if we got this disease and um, just want to express that. So those are some of the cool things that are going on. And then I also just want to mention that um, I haven't taken any coffee, have I? Actually, I'm drinking uh, hot chocolate. No product placement. We are not supported by Starbucks. I uh, just happen to have a free beverage from them, so that's where I went. Um, I'd like to know what projects you're working on, right? There's all sorts of stuff you could be doing. I'd like to know how you're getting by. Remember, uh, if you're looking for information about the pandemic, please go to official sources, not because Karen told you on Facebook or Twitter or wherever. CDC, WHO, government sources, rely on them. I'm going to go out on a limb and say gargling salt water will not protect you. I've seen this floating around. I'm not a medical professional, but I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that's not correct, unless the CDC or WHO says it is. And 
Also during this time, whether you deal with mental health issues like myself or not, you might be feeling just a little more stressed or anxious because if you have children, they're probably home with you. You might be able to hear my youngest daughter upstairs as my wife is working from home uh, as well. You might just be a little extra stressed. So please take a moment maybe to go back to our episode on... um, just how Tabletop Gaming can help you if you have mental health issues. So Dr. Alan G. Hunter came on and talked about just all this kind of stuff. So give that a listen. But reach out to medical health professionals. They're there. They want to help you. If you have a therapist or psychologist or psychiatrist or whoever, reach out to them. Give them a call. Get some help. And then nowadays, there's actually a lot of new ways that you can do some of this through your smartphone if you have one. There's apps and services. Um so you can sign up for any of that kind of stuff and do that and get all that sort of stuff as well if you need it. Uh, grocery stores and everywhere are restocking. Just be mindful. Maybe going off peak hours. A lot of them around here are closing early as well. But there are ways that we can kind of get through all of this. So a neat thing about my job is I help people, which is really, it's in my wheelhouse. I love to help people. And one of the things I like to do is I like to help people find stuff that'll make an impact on them and help them, especially now that they're isolated. So I, when I did the announcement that we were going to be doing this, I mentioned The Last Kingdom that I'm watching. It's on Netflix, and I just, I don't remember how far I got through it. So I'm re-watching this. It's based off the Cornwell novels, and I'm also reading, I'm kind of bring it back to top secret here, if you want to do some espionage. I'm rereading Noble House by James Clavell. I I love his work. I love Shogun. Um, They made a uh, TV miniseries of that. They made a TV miniseries of Noble House and also Gai Jin, which was not as great. (laughs) Um, Shogun's really the best. But the book Noble House is really interesting, set in the 1960s in Hong Kong. I would highly recommend it. It's available as an ebook, so you can buy it on Amazon or Barnes & Noble. Uh, You can also probably get it from your library. Uh, they have an app called Overdrive, which you can get. And you can get stuff for free. Usage is going through the roof, but you should be able to get a copy as well from there if you need. And there's painting and just all sorts of stuff you can do. So we're going to keep on doing these live streams. Like I said, every weekday is really what we're aiming for. So we're aiming Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday at 1030. And we're hoping to add in Thursdays at like 11 or 11 30 depending on how things go and uh, just kind of talk about stuff that we're doing and what's going on uh, i want to remind everyone we do have a podcast episode coming out on monday this coming monday and it's the one a lot of you've been waiting for that's right so lawyer gordon firemark comes on to talk about recasting and 3d printing and how intellectual property trademark and copyright all play into it it's a fascinating episode I had a lot of fun doing it, and I think you'll get some really great information from it. So please check that out. It'll be in the podcast feeds as usual on Monday. And now it's just a really great time to kind of go back to roots as things used to be done. Spend a little more time with our families, uh, do things in a little slower pace, a little more calming, and um, maybe get some work on projects. So you would probably think because I got a... Um, <laughs> I got an air compressor and um, airbrush for the holidays that I'd be doing a lot of that. But honestly, I haven't. And um, I hope to, but I want to get through this MDF pile and do a lot of that. So please make sure that you let me know what you think my next kit should be. And I just, I hope all of you are staying safe and healthy and um I'm just checking in the chat. It looks like there's not any more comments, but really, if anyone has any comments or things that, oh, I'm missing them. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, Sorry, people. I'm missing a lot of, here we go. Uh, Let me just get caught up. So, Adam, welcome to the stream, Adam. Adam says, your grill is brilliant. I agree 100%. And Mark says, I build so many MDF buildings that I have a bucket of clothespins just for models. Mark, I wish I was as prepared as you. You said you're jealous. I, You literally have nothing to build or paint. This virus certainly picked the wrong time to hit us. Well, you are part of our crew here. And if you write up some stuff, articles for the website, I can ship some MDF kits to you. So we will talk about that. 
And Adam says Mark should write a new game. Your, thank you for joining the uh, stream here. We've been singing your praises. And Adam, I agree. Hobby Bunker is a great store. One of the things I'm really sad about is a lot of our conventions and game days are getting canceled. And so I was supposed to be going to the Rise of Phoenix Game Con as a special uh, industry guest. That's been canceled. I think it's the right decision. That would be in April. Um, Havoc, we made the decision here to cancel that we weren't going to because of uh, the virus. And um, Havoc ended up postponing. Um, and actually, I, I said canceled for Rising Phoenix, but they're actually postponing as well. Maybe, don't hold me to it, maybe in the fall. Um, but they postponed. And I'm worried about two things. One, I'm worried about Huzzah, which I love. They've suspended player registration for the time being. I suspect if things continue as they are, they will cancel or reschedule the convention. And that's going to make me really sad. But again, if they do it right call, they haven't made that decision yet. Uh, but they have suspended new player registration. And I'm worried, and I know it doesn't come until August. And that seems like a lifetime away that things should be fine. But I am really worried that the Hobby Bunker won't have the game day in August, which makes me really sad as well. Uh, so I'm trying to be optimistic and not think that far ahead. We'll see how things go. Take it one day at a time and how that's going. Hi, Dave. Thank you for joining the stream. I want to say a big hi to everyone who's joining us and watching us live now. So um, just to recap, we've been doing all sorts of really cool stuff. I hope you are able to work on some stuff. If not, get in touch with us. Maybe we can work something out. We have a whole team of people here who are writing articles, which will be going live on the website in due time. I'm trying to get through those along with everything else. Life is oh, crazy, right? Um, and we have the new podcast episode coming out on Monday. And I've been encouraging our stable of uh, podcast hosts to maybe record themselves when they're doing stuff at home and then send the audio or the video to me. And then we'll get that out through our streams as well. Uh, I honestly, at one point did consider just closing down for the time being and saying, we're giving recons on break and we're not doing anything new. But then I thought as much as it might make my life a little easier, really, I think we're providing a service to all of you. Right. And it seems like, yeah, this is just, fun right and it is but at the same time a lot of stuff going on out in the world is not fun right now a lot of people worried about a lot of things so the least we can do is keep on giving you some content that you like maybe get your mind off things for a little while uh, just have some fun and see how things go so that's what we're really hoping to do and so we will continue as long as we can and one of the beautiful things about this is it can all be done remotely so we can all be safe and practice social distancing yeah, maybe that means we're not actually getting together to play games. Maybe that means we're not going to conventions and game days. Things will resume. There'll be a sense of normalcy at some point. This too shall pass. I promise you eventually it will. But for the time being, this is our reality, everyone. So we're just trying to get through it and see how life goes. Uh, Mark, no, don't worry. We're not going to close down. That's just, that was something I was thinking about. I wasn't quite sure. but. I feel it's our mission to keep on going on and just see what we can do and give content for people so we can get stuff going and going out. Um, before this stream, I had done a live stream and unfortunately went to my personal page. And so I just want to mention someone, uh, Peter said, I need to shave and it's right. This is like my pandemic <laughs> growth. I got to work on that and make something happen to it. Uh, it just, <laughs> This is a little crazy. Uh, maybe I'll get some time today. I'll take another break from working at home and uh, go shave. And I know my hair's crazy. I haven't been able to get my hair cut. doesn't matter. Um, but Mark, you raise a really good point. You say, we are missing so many things that are normal. My game store is shut down. We need everything we can get. And, uh, you know, that's ultimately the decision I came to as well, that normal is kind of gone. So any sort of stability we can give. And in our own weird way, I don't want to, super inflate the importance here uh, for what Wigan Marie Khan does because I get it. Yes, we're informational sometimes, we're educational sometimes, but really we are entertainment and there are much more important things in life. But sometimes this is what you need and this is what we can do. So this is our own tiny, tiny, tiny part that we can do for all of you is to just do what we're doing. So 
the podcast episode coming out on Monday should be really good. Right now, Joshua is working on it, and he's continuing to do all his magic, and Jamie's continuing to do all his magic, and I'm just I'm truly truly grateful for everyone who's part of the team in any capacity, and I highly value all of them. I highly value all of you. So thank you for all that you do. And please make sure that you are safe and healthy and happy and be kind and good to one another. And just just be the good people I know you are. Uh, so that's what we have. And we are drawing to a close because my coffee break is ending now. And uh, it means it'll be back to work for me, unfortunately. But I might be able to sneak away and do a little bit more work on my uh, tent barracks. I really am so excited. It's my final uh, thing for Yamashiro. Not because I want to be done with it. It's just because it means not only will I have completed all these kits, but I'll have completed a whole set. And that's a huge achievement for me. And I'm sure it's an achievement for anyone else who's done it. Uh, so that's just what we have. And I know some of you might be missing Adrian. Adrian's not gone for good or anything. <laughs> he his life is crazy. Like if your life is crazy and my life is crazy, his is a hundred times crazy. And this pandemic makes it a lot worse with stuff. So he works in the IT medical field and he's working from home, but then he has a lot of stuff going on um, with his impending move to Pennsylvania that we've announced on the show. And so he's trying to do all that and his availability is just kind of restricted. <laughs> which is okay. We're managing. It's the least important thing in the world for our part here. His family life is always more important. Uh, everyone's is actually it's far more important than what we do here, but we're just doing our part to see what's going on. Um, this is Friday. Tomorrow's Saturday. I know I feel like I'm sitting in the obvious, but over the weekend, we won't be doing this. Uh, all the kids will be here at home with my wife and I, and we will officially be off the clock, but we'll be doing full parenting mode Whereas right now we're kind of splitting and we are so thankful that my parents who are both retired and they're safe and healthy now, they have not always been, uh, but they are now and that they are um, watching our eldest and they're homeschooling her for us, uh, doing all the school stuff, which is really great. My mom used to be in education and just helps out with all that. And my dad, although he would say he is not a smart person, he is, and he has such a great science brain it's amazing he's been an engineer and he just i don't know he does things and knows stuff i could never fathom in my life uh so between the two of them we're just they're doing a lot so we're just really grateful for that but that allows my wife and i to work from home and do all our craziness and for me to do my coffee break like this and see how it goes so thank you all for watching uh, like I said, we'll have this up on YouTube. So maybe you're watching on YouTube, we'll link to it on Twitter and our other social media as well. And um, we'll be back on Monday with another one of these. Please be well over the weekend. And I hope to see you on Monday, 1030 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much. And as always, I'm just checking for any more comments. None right now. So as always, you know the drill. No matter how busy you are, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter how crazy life is at the moment, and it's really crazy, you know that you gotta, you need to, you have to keep on gaming. <laughs>